holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Yo, it's rolled in dots and optimists blocking shots for the moccasins constantly mocking the son of God who conquered sin. How can this be irrelevant? This heavenly element sent to be head him in death was his medicine, gentlemen, eloquent messages. What's up, folks? I just got out here. Usually I come right along with these fellows and set up myself. However, my folks are in town, so I have to show them the hot spots, all the, the fun areas on the strip and whatnot. So I don't just do things arbitrarily for no reason. Even my methodology, not just what I say, the content, but the delivery is for a certain reason. Scripture gives us that blueprint for our engagements with the unbeliever. I'd like to know uh, who, el who else is it besides the Pharisees that Jesus spoke, uh, you know, he, God he even spoke harshly against his own apostles. Okay, times. but I, I would like and they to, were considered, you know, I'm curious, righteous by besides, measures. besides his apostle, his students, apostles, and the Pharisees, can you tell me someone else in the Bible? Every unbeliever. The Bible says that all unbeliever's are fools, which in that Greek, that uh, Greek rendering of the word fool is moros, which means moron. So all unbelievers are morons. Okay? Now, uh, Jesus in his incarnation, limited time frame of 30 some odd years, uh, and that of which is recorded, called certain groups morons, and uh, snakes, vipers, uh, you know, dead men's bones and so forth, different things for the uh, Pharisees because they were hypocrites and they uh, did. You know, the question is, is, did Jesus speak specifically to an individual in that manner aside from it being the Pharisees or his own student apostles? Do, yeah, can you not, tell not me just, somewhere in, in the not Bible? Just in, not just in word, but also in action. A lot of times people say, oh, I'll turn the other cheek and they, they, they take that out of context. But they forget the fact that he also turned some tables, you know. So um, we have to look at who is being spoken to, because uh, many times people bring up First Peter or Second Peter. Is it First Peter three fifteen or Second Peter? First Peter three fifteen, which says, "Be ready always to give an answer for the hope that is within you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence." Well, that answer that is he's talking about in that passage is dealing with going before the governing officials. Uh, because they were being persecuted at that time for their faith, and so they had to be ready and willing to, uh, able to give an answer to those officials because they were uh, having that high office, they were to do it with gentleness and reverence. So that, given that context, it was for those people. Not at all times and all places, all peoples, are we to, uh, you know, not put a, an unbeliever in their place. That's all I intend to do. Okay, look, I'm not some people take it the wrong way, though. Can you ask one of your buddies, where in the Bible does Jesus speak in such a way other than to a Pharisee? Why does it have to be just Jesus and not the Holy Spirit who inspired Scripture? They're all, they're, all three individuals of the Godhead are God. Uh, well, it's very relevant to know if he spoke that way to anyone other than disciples or Pharisees. It's relevant. Okay, what, what is a Pharisee but a human being? No. We just call him that. No, 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 sir, listen. <laughs> the reason he called them that is not because they had they were Pharisees. Yes, it is. It's because they were hypocrites. And there are all kinds of hypocrites standing right no, before me. I don't know which ones, but I know that there are. And so many no. times I could say, well, I'm just addressing a modern-day Pharisee. They're hypocritical. They say no, one thing. They no. follow the, the letter of the law, but not the heart of it. They were the uh, some kind of religious leaders or spiritual advisors yeah, and they didn't, at the but, time. That but if those religious leaders were not hypocrites in what they did, then he wouldn't have. His confrontation with them had nothing to do with them being people. It had everything to do with them being hypocrites and false teachers. So any hypocrites and false teachers I come across, they're modern day Pharisees. You know, maybe I don't see what's so hard to understand about that. Maybe if I had What's the answer? I have an answer, and he's not going to accept it. Well, he should have accepted Pharisees no. and, and disciples, scribes. The scribes were the lawyers. They were not religious people, right? 
He told us, he called the scribes. They, I think they were religious. I think everyone's religious. Right, right. But I'm just saying, I mean, they were not like the leaders, the religious leaders of the time. They were like more like lawyers. The scribes were the ones that kept the law. And all, I mean, not kept the law. But <laughs> I don't know. I thought the scribes were just the people who wrote stuff. Right, but know. he called the scribes Scholars and Pharisees. Scholars of sorts. He, he put the scribes and Pharisees in the, in the same... Uh, Go into the mic. I'm going to talk to you about that in a second. Wait, wait, wait. One more thing. Okay. Right there. Don't um, be too long because you got a lady who's... No, anxious. it's very quick. Can you let her interject real quick? I just, just want you to tell me why is it relevant. Why is what relevant? Why is it relevant? Because he's asking, he's asking whether Jesus Christ talked to just the Sadducees the, and, and his disciples. And he is trying to find out whether he talked to other people other than right, that. Right. And he says... It is relevant. Why is it yeah, relevant? Good, excellent you, question, ma'am. Thank you. That's a very good question. For you to know. Why, is okay. why is it relevant? Okay, I will tell you. That's, 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 like, that's like saying uh, if, if God came back today and he slammed some dude who fit into the X category. Well, he only did it to them. That doesn't mean it doesn't apply to someone else. No, there's commonality uh, between the Pharisees and other people who would be labeled whatever. You get what I'm saying? So the, the, the young lady there brings up an excellent question. Why is that relevant? Do you have an answer for why it is relevant? I'm going to get to that, but before I get to that, uh, still on the same subject, I want to hear your explanation. Jesus Christ did not answer Herod because his questions were not relevant. And Jesus was not up there to entertain people. He came for a purpose. He didn't answer Herod because his questions were not relevant. Your questions are not truly relevant, sir. So when they didn't answer him, one and two and three times and you guys don't get it what else can they say yeah it says in titus to speak evil of no one to be peaceable gentle okay hold on pause for a second all humility to all men pause for a second i don't believe in false humility and to say don't speak evil of someone i have not done that to speak the truth concerning them is not speaking uh, slanderously towards them because that's the evil that we're talking about falseness maybe you're maybe you're lacking patience for saying that i'm impatient when really you don't know my heart okay judge whether or not that's actually the case i heard maybe it just appears to you that i'm impatient okay honestly would i have to go by the biblical definition of things okay now and this is even granting that you're taking what it's said there in proper context i'm reading it i'll give you that benefit of that doubt but Sir, you have to define vile according to scripture. What you might find distasteful doesn't mean it's unscriptural. So if we love it and we were doing something that scripture endorses and you consider vile, then we have not at all fallen from the path, as you are claiming we are. Okay. So what's that passage in Titus? Because I'm not here to defend myself. I'm here to defend the word of God and the Christ who represents it. Okay. Now, if I'm in error, like I said, I'll go home, study this and uh, have to change my approach. But so far, I've been okay. studying the scriptures for 10 plus years, and I find that there's nothing unbiblical about what I do Jesus, or how I do it. Jesus. Sometimes I cross the line, but I Je haven't so far tonight. Jesus, man. Because the issue is here, either either you're misunderstanding something or there's maybe okay. a contradiction in scripture, because you can't place exceptions for the apostles, Jesus, and the prophets who did those things that you are saying would be ungentle. Maybe it's your definition of gentleness, uh, or maybe it's applied to a certain person because they were doing those things in scripture okay. and they were endorsed, not just saying, oh, it was a historical narrative. And so we need to uh, get to the bottom of that. I don't know of any other places where Jesus spoke to an individual other than the Pharisees or his apostle students that way. Um, not off the top of my head. I mean, you could say by insinuation, he called the women at the well a whore. Not, he didn't say it, but by what he, uh, in a roundabout way, was basically getting at what he already knew, that she was a whore and told her to repent of her ways. You seem to be isolating only the statements of the recordings of the historical narratives of the time of life of Jesus Christ as something that is valid for this uh, sort of you, approach. You, you, how was a non-Pharisee... Why are you stuck on the Pharisees? It's like that lady said. Because, Why is it relevant that it's you one people group the, that he addressed? The aspect of being a hypocrite. You said you brought up the aspect yeah, of being a because you're harping on it. Otherwise, I wouldn't even care to t discuss it. No, you were just saying that's what he was dealing with at the time. That's the historical narrative, and so he called him a name. Maybe had he lived for 50 years instead of 33, he would have talked to a lot more people. He'd say, "Oh, it's only the hypocrites, or the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, and the such and such people group." Because that's why he was calling them that. It's not 
a label of Pharisee. Like, okay, now okay. You, you say Hold hypocrites. On. No, you say hypocrites. And false teachers. Okay. Because that's what they're teaching, false uh, so how you is, know, a devotion to the law how, over how, and against. Look, Galatians 3.1, listen, rather. He's, a, he's, a, he's addressing all of the Galatians. It's not just the apostles. It's the whole church that resides in Galatia. Oh, foolish Galatians, calling them idiots. Okay? In, Gal in Titus, rather, the book you just quoted from, in uh, verses 12 through 13, it says, Cretans, this people group, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. Therefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Jude 1.10 says, But these men revile the things which they do not understand, and, and this is talking about all unbelievers, and the things which they know by instinct, like unreasoning animals, they're going to be destroyed as a result. But these, in Second Peter, it's repeated, like unreasoning animals, born as creatures of instinct to be captured and killed, reviling where they have no knowledge. I just found out that um, Jesus was attacking the hypocrisy of the people, not necessarily their, uh, 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 their uh, trade or, or profession. Because there's an instance, in, an instance in the Bible where there's there's a scribe following Jesus, and Jesus told them that he wasn't far from the kingdom of God. So he was not attacking the the profession of a scribe or of exactly. Pharisees. Good point too. And he was not referring to all Pharisees and all scribes. And I can give him the quote if you if you want, or the, the scripture if you want to see. It, it. Yeah, right and uh, Paul himself was uh, largely educated in that the circle Pharisee, himself. Yes. Uh, like you said, the, uh, the the Pharisee who came to him, who was more humble, maybe the right. the Holy Spirit. I don't know if he was actually converted in the end or not. It doesn't really say in Scripture. The, what I get from him is like we have to mold our, ourselves to the people. He's giving all these. It's leaked into the church and it's I sick. Know, but he's giving all these. It's blasphemy, blasphemy towards Christ. I mean, what if people? What if people are this? What if people are that? Well, they're lost. If they cannot get it and don't have any common sense. There's nothing we can do. I mean, yeah, but these, these people would rather go to the traditions of men in the modern right. culture and say, this is the authority. We need to be a little nice, fluffy exactly. uh, teddy bears instead of dealing with how God describes things. Right. If he says right. unbelievers are this or that or the other thing, that's the way it is. So he is ashamed of Christ. It's kind of this wounded deer kind of meek thing. Why are you beating up on me? The reason why we're kind of being sarcastic with them is because we're returning to full his folly. These people right. are not asking serious questions. Okay. There was blood atonement right, required, and that's why there were so many animal sacrifices. But they were all just figures for the Christ who would come. Why God requires a blood sacrifice? I don't know. It's just his way. And that is what's required. Christ being the perfect lamb, the spotless lamb of God, came. And, you know, you look at uh, where, what uh, the calendar uh, part of the year is. We've got Resurrection Sunday coming up here tomorrow. He will have risen uh, historically uh, on that day which shows and vindicates that he is who he claimed to be, the Messiah, the Son of God, who did come to die for his children, to wipe out, to blot out their sins so they'd be remembered no more. Okay? And you had even the, Fer the not just the Pharisees, but the, the other religious leaders of that day were so enraged by this because they love the darkness and they hate the light that they even... After all this wondrous, glorious revelation and miraculous uh, presentation, decided to lie about it or pay off the soldiers to lie about this and say, oh, that the disciples came and stole it. Stole the body. Because they were that blinded and hearted. And what's up, sir? How's it going? It's going all right. How about for you? Uh, everything's going pretty good. Cool. Saturday night and you're feeling all right. I'm feeling all right. Okay. So I really appreciate you. I, I love what you stand for. I love the relationship you have with the Almighty. Thank you. And I just want to share something back with you. All right. Check this out. Everybody needs a call 
was good. That was good. Fun times here. Third Street, man. What can you do? That's why people come here and pay $9 for parking, just so they can see some people entertain them.